Boy, the weather sure did take a change. I have uh, cleaned the crank, re-oiled it, replaced the bearing, timing gears, etc., etc. I paid extra for the ARP bolt upgrade, and I think it's a real good idea to use the ARP Ultra Torque assembly lubricant on these bolts and so that's what I'm gonna do make sure that you get it on everything on all of that thread oh. this is supposed to be the magic and this way if there's not if I have a problem I got it on video I'm just going to do this. There's a special technique for the ARP tightening. I recommend that you go to their site. It's very friendly and you'll learn a lot. You, They recommend, if I interpret this correctly, I'm going to put a daub under the head here as well that you tighten and loosen five to seven times before you go for your final tightening. I called the supplier of these connecting rods and they told me with these ARP bolts that the uh, torque spec would be 38 pounds so that's what I'm going with on an ARP bolt. This is nice stuff. It's not, it looks like graphite. I'm, it's supposed to be their stuff, so I'm using it. You can do what you want, alright? As always, think for yourself. These things stretch. They make a tool, it's about 200 bucks for a good one. It's a stretch gauge. There's a little dimple here, and there's a dimple at this end. And you put that stretch gauge in here, and they have a PDF file that you can copy a chart. When you build your motor, you want to keep track of where these bolts are and what the length is. You measure it, and you use that bolt, and you get your torque. And if it stretches, you, do, you have to do a rebuild down the road at some point. You have to take the rods off. If that bolt stretches, five ten thousandths of an inch it's junk that's why that gauge costs so much because it's it's capable of doing those kinds of uh, numbers and measurements so keep that in mind I'm just snugging things down and then I'll when it comes time for the torquing and tightening I'll do that all at once I'm probably not going to spend as much time on this as I have on other things because the clock is ticking. Now I've got my assembly, the my lubricant. I'm not calling it assembly lube because they make products called assembly lube and I don't recommend you use that. And I'm not going to tell you what I'm using. Okay? How's that sound? How about if I withhold some information? Because it seems, damn it, anytime you discuss anything about oil, everybody gets all riled up and say, oh, mine's better and so on and so forth. So you use what your grandpa taught you to use. I recommend that you use whatever you like and lots of it and that uh, you use it, mix in with it, whatever your little recipe is. Make sure you mix in with it. Uh, I wish that was a little looser. The motor oil that you're going to use in your car. Whatever motor oil you like and you run with, that's what you should slather everything with. Boy, that took a long time to get out, didn't it? I'm focusing here, and I can't be messing around with the camera while I'm doing this. Sorry, guys. Not tightening it up. I'm just spreading that stuff around. Getting it on all of the threads on all the surfaces. And it says to do that at the ARP site five to seven times. I think that's a little overkill myself. But they're covering their tail. 
Yeah. During the assembly, I didn't feel that this rod, it was tighter than the others. And I, I just, you know, you can say to yourself, oh, it's new, it's very close, maybe I put a little more oil on there, whatever. But I, I took it apart and I found a little speck of something on the back side of this bearing between here and here. So now I'm going to put it back together. And uh, I took some of this white scotch bright and I, I put it, I ran it back and forth across it and there definitely was something there. Maybe a piece of plastic gauge. That's why you have to be careful where you set everything and be as clean as you possibly can. So. Okay, when I take that rod off, you see those witness marks in there? Something's going on. Something's going on. We're going to find out what. We're going to repolish those. We're going to slide that. See if I can do it in the camera lengths here. I can't see very good here. You don't want to. You want to be real careful with these bearings. My hands are all oily, and I can't see. So I'm going to check it out. If I, I'll let you know. So I take that white Scotch Brite. I didn't see anything in here. This cleaned up real nice. And I did take this back, and I actually took a piece of emery cloth and I rubbed it back and forth. I didn't feel anything but something was there or something shifted and made that little mark. So now we're going to put it back together, lube it up and try it again. Okay, here's another little comment. It made all the difference in the world. Now look at this. See? Let me tell you another little secret. The more performance you're going for, the looser it should be. Go to the loose side of the spec, not to the extreme. Much difference. It's not sloppy. It's not. It's right where it should be. And uh, the uh, put a feeler gauge between this space here and measure that. I forget what the side play is. Look in your book. I got to tell you everything, and I got time. <laughs> Had to turn the uh, music off so the uh, music Nazis don't get me. Okay, we're going up to our final tightening. And I'm going to go to uh, 25. Alright. And we're going to make sure everything's happy at each stage. And I told you now, keep this thing moving. Don't stop and start it. And these are hard ass bolts, so they're not going to give like those case bolts did. See that barely, barely moved. And that's a good thing. See how that first one fell under its own weight? That's a good thing. That's what we want, baby. Just a little of nothing was between the bearing and that cap. And I took that white scotch bright. I shouldn't be talking about stuff. This is this is the ultimate right here. This is the most important part of your build. I'm happy. I'm happy. All right. Now we're going to go up to 30. I already loosened them and tightened them a whole bunch. can't see. I can feel my, my energy level building. Wow. <laughs> you know what? The way that felt, I'm going to go all the way to 38, guys. From 25 to 38. With my NASA calibrated
Torque crunch. I wonder how many engines I've built with this thing. <laughs> I should get it calibrated. Okay, 35, 36, 37, 38. Let's go the other side here. Wow, that felt nice. Oh, that looks good. That's a lot of burrito. Don't stop when you get it moving. Oh, that wasn't nice. But it was good. I'm happy. Easy Jeezy's happy. Nice. That's all you have to do. You don't have to keep clicking it and playing with it and messing around with it because even though you got that fancy lube underneath, you've developed friction underneath the head. So you're not really checking the thread stretch and thread torque. That's what you want to get. And the higher the rating, the stronger the bolt. According to what I was looking at, this is about an 8,000 8, pound tension. And it stays in tension. Nice. This crankshaft is ready to drop in, buddy. Oh, man.